good morning student welcome to day one of rooftop solar pv installation and maintenance today our first day the first class is sun coordinates and solar cells at end of this lesson you shall be able to brief about prime meridian equator and finding latitude and longitude facing and angle of solar panel brief about solar terms explain about radiance irradiance and its types brief about the solar irradiance meters and global solar atlas so our first topic is earth coordinates in earth coordinates first we are going to see equators what is equators equator is a imaginary circle which equally divides the earth into northern hemisphere and southern hemispheres so it is a imaginary lines which is equally divides the earth into northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere so next to, uh, term is prime meridian what is prime meridian prime meridian also imaginary circle which equally divides the earth into eastern hemisphere and western hemispheres it is also called as greenwich meridian why it is called as greenwich medium because this imaginary circle that is a prime meridian passing through the city of greenwich so it is also called as greenwich median next one is a latitude what is latitude latitude is the measurement of your location any location <laughs> in the north or south to the equators next one is a lat longitude what is longitude longitude also the measurement of your location any location in the east or west to the prime meridian now why we have to see about the latitude and longitude latitude and longitude together can describe the exact location of any place on the earth If for example in case of prime meridian in prime meridian the longitude is 0 degree similarly in case of equator the latitude is 0 degree next question how to find out the latitude and longitude for example if you want to find the latitude and longitude there are two ways there is, is there one is a google map you can uh, have the google map in your mobile phone you just uh, zoom the lo your locations in the google map and uh, touch your location for few seconds there will be a red color pin will drop then touch the dropped pin then the latitude and longitude will be displayed automatically the another method is if you have the magnetic compass app in your mobile phone then you can use the ca magnetic compass if you use the magnetic compass in the locations the magnetic compass will automatically give the latitude and longitudes so next is a angle of solar panel the installation angle of solar panel will depend upon its geographical locations for example the solar panel can be fixed in the two way one is you can fix with a fixed angle another one method is a you can tilt the solar panel according to the direction of sun so if you fix the solar panel with a fixed angle then you have to fix the solar panel such that if you fix the solar panel in the northern hemisphere the solar panel should face south for example in case of northern hemisphere if the facing of the solar panel should be towards the south direction similarly if you fix the solar panel in the southern hemisphere of the earth you should face the solar panel in the north direction for example if you going to fix the solar panel in the southern hemisphere the facing of the solar panel should be towards the north directions in general the solar panel should not be fixed vertically or horizontally it should be fixed in a such a angle what is that angle it is according to the latitude of the locations for example if you fix the solar panel in chennai it is 13 degree latitude the tilting of the solar panel should be 13 degree it also depends upon the seasonal changes and the geographical factors in case if you are going to fix the solar panel in the equator of the earth in equators the latitude is 0 degree so you have to fix the solar panel with 0 degree tilting angle next we can see some important solar terms first solar term is apparent solar time what is apparent solar time it is a time measurement by the daily movement of the sun is called as apparent solar time so you already know our grandfather uh, mothers tell the time after seeing the shadow from the building trees or pole 
how they are finding only using the shadow they will find out the times the upper and solar time can be measured using only instruments that is called sundial we can measure the upper and solar time using sundial with limited accuracy what is solar time upper and solar time it is a time measured by the daily movement of the sun next one is a mean solar time what is mean solar time everyone have the wrist watch wall clock etc the time measured by the our clocks or watches are called as mean solar time however there will be a difference between the upper and solar time and mean solar time the difference it is called as equation of time the difference between the upper and solar time to the mean solar time is called as equation of time next we are going to see the solar node what is solar node the point when the sun reaches the prime meridian is called as solar node when the earth is rotating at one point of time the sun will cross the prime meridian when the sun reaches the prime meridian it is called as solar node but solar node and local node may not be same it may differ depend upon its locations next is a solar upper and solar day what is upper and solar day generally what we, we when we say day from night to next uh, night but solar day that is upper and solar day is the time between one solar noon to next solar noon is known as upper and solar day upper and solar day next one is a next term is a solar constants what is solar constants the total amount of solar energy received per unit area at the distance of one astronomical unit away from the sun is called as solar constant again i repeating total amount of solar energy received per unit area at the distance of one astronomical unit is called as solar constants what is astronomical unit the other name of astronomical unit is earth mean distance so it is a mean distance of earth from the sun how much it is a distance one astronomical unit is equal to 150 million kilometers which is almost equal to 93 million miles one astronomical unit is equal to 150 million kilometers the solar constants at this distance at the one astronomical unit is taken as 1367 watts per meter squares it is a solar constant taken at a distance of one astronomical unit this solar constants is increases by 0.2 percent for every 11 solar years next term is radiance the number of photon emitted by the sun is called as radiance it is measured by the unit of watts per radian per meter square so next one is irradiance first we are seeing radiance it is a number of photon emitted from the sun next one is a irradiance what is a irradiance the amount of radiation falling on the surface of earth is called as irradiance so amount of radiation falling on the surface of the any object or earth is called as irradiance it is measured by the unit watts per meter squares there are three type of irradiance one is a direct normal irradiance second one is a diffuse horizontal irradiance third one is a global horizontal irradiance first we will see what is direct normal irradiance so it is the amount of irradiance received per unit area of earth surface perpendicular to the rays coming in a straight line for example from the sun if the rays is coming the amount of irradiation received uh, in the earth surface which is perpendicular to which is perpendicular to the rays uh, is called as direct normal irradiance so how much irradiance received in a surface of the earth perpendicular to the rays is called as direct normal irradiance it is also measured by water per meter square it can be measured using a instruments called pyreliometer that is called pyreliometers it is available in the figure you can see so next one is a diffuse horizontal irradiance it is simply called as dhi diffuse horizontal irradiance the amount of irradiance received per unit area horizontal to the earth surface by the rays from all other directions scattered by the molecules or other particles of atmosphere 
but not by the straight beam of sun is called as diffuse horizontal irradiance. It is also measured in the unit of watts per meter square. So, this is also irradiance received uh, in the earth surface which is horizontal to the earth surface, but not from the direct sunlight from the direct uh, straight beam. It is received by the where other any other any other direction scattered by the molecules or scattered by the particles of the atmosphere. After that, after scattering, it is reaching the surface. It is called diffuse horizontal irradiance. So, third one is a global horizontal irradiance. It is simply called as GHI. The sum of direct normal irradiance and the diffuse horizontal irradiance is called as global horizontal irradiance. It is received in the units area of surface general to the earth is called as global horizontal irradiance. Okay, it is a sum of both the irradiance, what is the both the irradiance, direct normal irradiance and diffuse horizontal irradiance. It is also measured in the watts per meter squares. There is a one instrument is there to measure the global horizontal irradiance. The name of the instrument is pyranometer. The name of the instrument is pyranometer used to measure the global horizontal irradiance. Now, we can see how much energy is emitted by the sun. The energy emitted by the sun is 3.72 multiply by 1020 megawatts, which is almost equal to 63 megawatts per meter square. That means, if you place a solar panel in our earth, which have 1 meter squares, that means, if you install a solar panel with which having the area of 1 meter squares, you will get 63 megawatts of power, if the energy emitted by the sun is received in the earth. But it is not possible, because when the sun solar energy is received in the earth, three things will happen. First one is it will be reflected back, it will be absorbed by the sum of the molecules particles, the remaining will be scattered and passing through the molecules and the clouds. So, about 30 percent of its energy solar energy is reflected back into the space. In certain spot in the earth may get almost all the solar energy. Similarly, some certain parts will not get none of the sunlights. The standard global horizontal irradiation are taken as 1000 watts per meter square. When you are calculating the energy of the solar panel or when you calculate the power of the solar panel, you have to take global horizontal irradiation as 1000 watts per meter square. It is a general standard. It is a general standard. However, it may change according to the sun angle, air mass, day length, cloud coverage and pollution level etcetera. Next one is a solar irradiance meters. You can see in the figure it is a solar irradiance meters. What is solar irradiance meters? It is an hand held instruments used to measure the solar irradiance either in watts per meter square or BTU per hour feet squares. So, what is solar irradiance meters? It is a hand held instruments where it is used, it is used to measure the solar irradiance either in watts per meter square or BTU per hour feet squares. It may also called as portable pyranometer. Already we are seeing pyranometer used to measure the global horizontal irradiance. It is also called as portable pyranometers or solar power meter or solar light meter. How it is measures? It is measure the intensity of the sunlight heating on the sensor. This meter have one sensors, how much sunlight is heating on the sensors, it is measure the intensity of the sunlight and convert the intensity into power per unit area, power per unit area. It is like a lux meter, lux meter used to measure the light intensities, it is also measure the light intensity, but it convert the intensity into watts per unit area. It is used to measure and compare the solar irradiance at a different point of location. You can use these instruments, you can measure the solar irradiance at different locations to choose the best place for the installation of solar panel. So, next one is a global solar atlas. It is simply called as GSA. What is global solar atlas? It is a free online interactive map based application provided by the energy management assistant program. It is a multi 
donor trust administered by the World Bank. So, what is a Global Solar Atlas? It is a free online interactive map based applications are available in the Google. So, what, what is the use of this one? That is a Global Solar Atlas. It provides quick and easy access information on global solar resource data, PV, power potential data, potential calculations and the extensive download section at the click of mouse. Global Solar Atlas has three section wise global solar atlas download map for your country or your region and the photovoltaic power potential of the country. So, global solar atlas has a three sections one is a global solar atlas. So, so global solar atlas means it we from we can find out how much solar energy is available in the each region and download map for your country or region as well as photovoltaic power potential of country. Okay. This is the end of our class. Now, we are going to see the summary that means what we have studied today. In today class, we have seen about the prime meridian, equators and latitude and longitude, how to find out the latitude and longitude, what is the angle of solar panel, not only angle of solar panel, what is the direction of solar panel in the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. We have also seen about the solar terms and solar constants. We already explained about the radiance, irradiance and its types. Then finally, we see about the solar irradiance meters and global solar atlas. Thank you.